Hey everybody and welcome to the second episode of the Thankful For You Mystery Box. This video is all about the placemat. Now it was a little bit smaller than we had anticipated so in this instance we're going to actually use this to like place hot food on or something like that. So I've provided you with two different designs for sublimation and then I also have an HTV version. So you can kind of do whichever one you like best. I absolutely love how these came out. They're really fun, really bright and I feel like you could use them for a lot of things. You don't just have to use them for, you know, food. You could really use them as a little display piece or you could put some candles on them. It'd be great for like a centerpiece. So you can really be very creative with these little mats and I think they're really fun. So let's get started. I'll show you how to do both versions. Whatever we would do, we do it just for fun. To load the design for your SVG, for your placemat, you're gonna go to Cricut Design Space, click Upload, and then Upload Image and click Browse. You're gonna find the folder that you saved it in. So if for me, it's in my mystery box assets folder and then I just need to find my placemat folder, which is right here. And you're gonna choose the one that's just called placemat. The other ones are for the sublimation designs and I'll show you how to print those in just a second. I'll also put a little timestamp down below. So if you only wanna do sublimation, you can get to it. But what you wanna do is select the SVG, which is sometimes shown as an Internet Explorer, Microsoft Edge, Firefox, something like that file. Select that and it will bring up your SVG. Now all you have to do is click upload and then select the image from your recent uploads and add it to the canvas. Now you will wanna double check sizing because Cricut Design Space doesn't like to keep the sizing of a lot of SVGs. So I've measured my placemat. I have about 10 and a half inches by about seven and a quarter inches between the little seams. So we're gonna kind of mess with this a little bit but I think it's actually pretty much about the size that I need it to be. So I think we are good. This one actually really kept the size nicely and we can actually make this a little bit bigger if we want because we've got about seven and a quarter so you can go about to 7.25 or so. So I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger. Now this one we are going to use the Easy Weed Electric Copper and Olive. So your pumpkin will be the copper and the other part, the words, will be the olive. Now again, you can use any colors that you like if you don't want to use the colors that I provided. But we are doing this with HTV, so we do need to mirror our design. So what we're going to do is click the word flip and we're going to flip it horizontally on our mat. That way we don't have to try to remember to flip it or mirror it after we hit make it. This is just something that I do because I tend to forget once I hit make it that I need to mirror my image. So now I'm gonna click make it and it is gonna sort our images into two mats. Now what I love is that both of these cut on the everyday iron on setting. Now I like to just double check, make sure everything looks like it's been flipped, which it has. So then I'm gonna click continue and we can select our cut setting. Now I keep the everyday iron on setting as one of my favorites because I use it constantly. This is such an easy setting. It works great for most HTV. So I am gonna go ahead and select that. I'm gonna show you guys how to load your HTV. We'll get it all cut out and we're ready to press it on the mat. So we're gonna cut out our pumpkin and our happy Thanksgiving for the placemat. So what we're gonna be using today is the Caesar Electric in Copper and the Caesar Olive. I'm so excited for these. These are such beautiful colors. These cut on the everyday iron-on setting and You'll note that with the electric, you have a silver side and a colored side. The silver side is the side that goes down for the electric. And then when we move on to the olive, you'll, you'll want to double check which side you're using, but this one's really easy to see which side is much more shiny than the other. So this side's very shiny and then this one is not. You wanna put this very shiny smooth side down on your mat for cutting. So we're just using a standard green mat. We're gonna get ready to load the machine and cut this out.
do some fun layering on this placemat as well. I just thought this would be super cute. So I've got this adorable little pumpkin. So what I want to do is get it kind of lined up best I can, which is not always super easy. Sometimes you just kind of got to eyeball it. That looks pretty good. So then on top, we're going to have this Happy Thanksgiving. And you can kind of lay it wherever you want, but I just like to dry fit just to make sure it looks like it's even and straight. Everything looks really good. So this is Caesar Electric and Caesar Easy Weed. We're going to press them both at 305 and we're going to press our first layer for just a few seconds and then we'll press the second layer for a full press. So I'll take you guys over to the heat press and show you how to do that. So we have our heat press set to 305 and I've got it set to like a medium firm pressure and I do have my pressing pillow, a Teflon sheet and then magnets told my Teflon sheet on. So all we're going to do now is just press our pumpkin just for a few seconds to our placemat. Now this is why we're doing a few seconds when you do layering. Vinyl can shrink and HTV definitely shrinks. So you want to give it just a couple seconds and then gently peel it up. Now I will say sometimes, especially when they're textured like this, it doesn't always want to stick on the first press, but you'll just want to go slow. And you see I'm peeling it back at a really sharp angle and moving very, very slowly. So I'm just going to take my time to peel off this first carrier sheet. That looks really good. So now we're going to press our Happy Thanksgiving right on top. Get that lined up where you're happy. I think that looks pretty good. So we're going to get that on. Now this press will do the full 15 second press. We're ready to pull this up. Go ahead and pull that up. And then you can go ahead and remove your carrier sheet right away. Easy Weed is hot or cold peel, so whatever makes you happy. I like to hot peel. I don't know. I just a habit, but I like to do it that way. So there is our finished placemat. Now, if you want to do the placemat with sublimation, I've provided you with two different designs just in case you wanted to choose something different. So there's a couple of ways that you can print this. It's pre-sized, so really very, very simple. I actually recommend if you don't want to use Inkscape, use PDF. So it's pre-sized, it's ready to go. Just open the PDF and then all you need to do is click print. But I'll show you some print settings that you can use to make sure that you're going to get really good color. So what I'm going to do is click print. And like I said, this is pre-sized to fit on to your placemat. Now this one isn't going to take up as much room as the other. So really depending on the design you want to go with, pick whichever one makes you happy. So I want to make sure that I choose my sublimation printer, which is my ST4000. So I sometimes need to kind of scroll and find it a little bit. Sometimes it's just kind of missing. It just depends on where they want to throw it in the list. So right here, it's at the top for some reason. Now I only want to print one of these and I do want to just keep it on the portrait setting. I want to print it all pages and I just want to print it in color. Now what I want to do is print using my system dialog. So you can do control shift P on windows or you can just click where it says print using system dialog. So again, make sure that you have the correct printer selected and then click preferences. It's going to bring up a lot of different things for you to choose from. Now for my paper type, I find that using plain bright white paper works great but I am going to change my quality to high. Then what I want to do is I'm actually going to select right here where it says sub mirror one. This is a pre set up um, print that I set up for myself so that I don't have to mess with any of my colors, but I will link below the video that shows you how to set that up. Now, if you don't want to set that up, that's okay. You can just go to more options and make sure to turn off your high speed by just clicking it and make sure that mirror image is turned on. Once you have all of that set, you can just go ahead and click OK and click print to print out your image. Now I do want to show you the second one that I have and I'm going to open this one in Inkscape just to show you a different way to print it. So if you want to use Inkscape, right click on it and click open with and choose Inkscape. Again, these are all pre-sized so really you can just print straight from the PDF and be done. Very, very simple. So this is the Happy Thanksgiving Day one with the little acorns and the apple and our little maple leaf and stuff. So this one's a little bit more colorful than the other one. So it's really up to you which one you want to do. But what we're going to do is click print. So you're going to click file and then click print. Now again, this is going to be very similar to the way we did the PDF. Click on preferences, make sure you have the right printer selected. And then again, I just use plain bright white paper. I use the high setting and then again you can choose your preset setting or 
You can go into more options, turn off high speed, turn on mirror image. I have mine set up. And again, I'm linking that video down below for you guys with how to kind of adjust your printer color settings because I did find I needed to adjust them just a little bit um, when I was printing. So I'm using StarCraft paper and StarCraft ink for these. So I'm going to print both of them out so that you guys can see them. And then we will go ahead and press them onto our placemat. So I have here the two different sublimation prints that we made for our placemat as well as our placemat. So there are a couple things that you'll need in order to do sublimation. Obviously you'll need a sublimation printer, sublimation prints, sublimation blanks, but I also recommend having some heat tape. This is Caesar heat tape. You guys always ask where I got this little um, kitty cat tape holder. I'll link it down below in the description. And then you're also going to need butcher paper. This is what people refer to as blowout paper, um, protective paper, things like that. This is to keep any of the ink that comes off of your print from the back from getting onto your press or onto something else. So what I'll do is I like to cut this to fit. So I just grab a pair of scissors. Butcher paper cuts super duper easy, so you don't have to worry too much about it. Really easy to work with. So just go ahead and cut that. Now, depending on how dark my print is, I find that doing two layers can really make a difference. Being that this has some dark browns and some bright yellows and oranges type shades in it, I'm going to go ahead and do two layers of butcher paper for this just to be safe because I don't want this to go to my press at all. So the way I'm going to do it this way is I'm going to lay my placemat onto my print and I'm gonna line it up. Now this is pretty well centered in the middle of the paper, so you'll be able to pretty much just line up your placemat with your paper. And then I'm gonna take my heat tape and I'm actually gonna tape it from the back. And it may not stick amazing to this placemat, but it should work just fine for what we're doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use my tape. And you can put a few pieces of tape down wherever you feel like you need them. The tape isn't gonna do any kind of damage. We're actually gonna have this flipped the other direction so your tape will be on the bottom. Anyways, so that's really easy. But like I said, you can choose whichever print you want, whichever de decoration makes you happy. Place it whichever direction you want. But I like to make sure this is well held down, especially when I'm gonna flip it over the other way. So once I've done that, I do like to put a piece of butcher paper behind this. Now I will say that this is pretty thick, so I don't worry too, too much about it going through the back, but that's something to keep in mind when you're doing any kind of sublimation, that you'll wanna make sure that you do have a piece of butcher paper on the back as well. So that's just something that you'll wanna keep in mind. So I like to make like what I like to call a little butcher paper sandwich. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my placemat and I'll flip it over so that the paper is on the top. So we'll have one piece of butcher paper that goes under this. Then we'll have these two layers that go on top. So you can see we made kind of a butcher paper sandwich with our design. Now I have my heat press set to 395 degrees for 60 seconds. So you're gonna wanna press this for a little while. It's real easy to do. So I'll take you guys over there and we can get this pressed. We're here at our StarCraft heat press. This is one of my favorite presses. I absolutely love it. Now I do have a Teflon sheet right here on my press. That's just to protect my press, especially when doing HTV. I have it put on here with magnets so I don't ever forget it. But you'll see we've got our butcher paper, then our placemat, more butcher paper, and then I also have a pressing pillow under this. So I just need to make sure that my placemat is on my pressing pillow. Make sure that my butcher paper is covering my design. That looks good. And we're gonna press this at about a medium pressure for about 60 seconds. So we're almost ready to pull this up. Be aware this is gonna be very warm when you pull it up. So just be aware of that because it is pretty warm. So what you'll do is go ahead and take off your butcher paper. And I like to just pull that off. And this one didn't really have a whole lot of ghosting, just a little. So that one is really hard to see. But what you'll see now is you have your design. So you can pull it off while it's on the heat press, just be careful. I don't mind pulling it off while it's on the heat press. Some people get a little freaked out by it, but I, it's fine. I just like to do it while it's still hot, so I go ahead and just pull it off. If it rips, it's not a big deal. It's just because it's stuck to the tape. The tape gets a little bit sticky, 
when it gets warm. But like, this is so cute and so bright. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all this peeled off and then I will show you guys what this looks like all finished. And here we have our finished placemats. These were really fun and really easy. I hope you guys learned a few little tips and tricks along the way. But be sure to tag me if you make these. I would love to see what you do with them. Like I said, use whatever colors you want, whatever designs you want. Be you, do you. I just wanted to really throw these in here because I really thought they were fun. If you guys have questions, let me know in those comments down below. And be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on any of the other Mystery Box products that we have coming out. I'm so excited to show you all of these fun designs. I hope you guys had so much fun with this. Have a great day, and as always, happy crafting.